Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I created my first set of cards using the March 2020 sheet load of cards file and I am super excited that starting today the sheet load of cards collaboration team is going to be sharing cards that they have made with this sheet load file. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made my cards and find out more about the collaborators. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. On my channel yesterday, I debuted the newest sheet load of cards, which is the March 2020 edition. And I let you know how you can download this file for free if you would like to create cards like this of your own. That video is linked below and I'll have it at the end of this video as an end card. I am also excited for another debut, the debut of the Sheet Load of Cards collaborators. I let you know last month who I chose to be on my very first collaboration team for Sheet Load of Cards and today each of them is either going to have a video on their YouTube channel, a blog post on their blog, or they'll be sharing pictures on their Instagram showing you how they use the latest sheet load of cards. Once you're done watching my video, I hope that you'll go visit all of the collaborators and see what they have created. Make sure to give them a thumbs up, a like, a comment, leave them some love and let them know that you saw what they created. Let's go ahead and get to the good part of the video where I'm going to show you how I created these cards. Before I get started with the process, I do want to share with you most of the products that I'll be using today. If I add anything later, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, once I start the process, I do go to a voiceover. So if I leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I will of course be using the March 2020 sheet load of cards. You can find out how to download this in yesterday's video. I will have it linked in the description box below for you to check out. For my stamp set, which I will be using a sentiment stamp set, you could always use an image if you have one here that would fit or that you like to use. But for today, I'm going to be using the Reverse Confetti The Most Beauty. And because my stamp set is very well loved and it's kind of hard to read, I'm going to pop up a picture on the screen here so you can see all of the sentiments. I just love the variety and I love the sayings in this. For my inks, I got out two different Gina K Designs inks. I'm not sure yet which I'm going to use. It's going to kind of depend when I get all the pieces cut out which ink will look better. But I have out powder blue and blue denim. For my cardstocks, I got out one piece of white cardstock for CS1, a piece of slate or kind of gray cardstock for CS2. This is going to be the matte for my sentiment. And then for CS3, I got out this blue cardstock. This will be the mat behind the skinny strip that's diagonal down the center. I do have just five pieces of white cardstock for my card bases. Now this sheet load does only yield nine cards, so you will end up with one extra card base that you can use later. The pattern papers that I'm going to use today came in the Home Again kit from Echo Park Paper. This was sold in January 2020. I'll see if it's still available and I'll link it below. But it came with 12 by 12 paper, 6 by 6 there were stamps, um, chipboard, lots of stuff in the kit. It was a great deal. And I do think that they're getting ready to sell another one here in March. So if you want to check it out, again, check out the link below. I did already pre-select the three papers I will be using. I have this floral, a wood grain, and then it's kind of almost a dark gray or really dark blue and it has lighter blue polka dots on it. Let's go ahead and start creating. To get started, I will be cutting my three pattern papers per the instruction on the printable. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a strip off the top that is three inches tall. Then I cut another strip right below that that is two inches tall. And then I flip that pattern paper and cut a strip that is four and a half inches wide. 
This four and a half inch wide strip gets cut into three pieces that are one inch tall. And then for the other two strips that I cut off the top, I cut each of those down to four inch wide sections. Now, don't worry if I'm going too fast for you here on screen. You can check out yesterday's video and download the printable, which gives you all of the instructions. Off camera, I cut the other two pattern pieces exactly like this, and you'll see that I have piece A, piece B, and piece C for all three patterns. Next, I'm gonna cut my piece of white cardstock into nine pieces that are two by two and a half inches. This is gonna be one of those pieces that you can adjust to fit whatever sentiment and image that you'll be stamping. Just make sure that you also adjust the next piece of cardstock, CS2, to fit these like a mat. Speaking of CS2, that is the next piece I'll be cutting. I will be cutting this into nine pieces that are two and a quarter by two and three quarters inches tall. Again, if you adjusted CS1, you'll want to adjust this piece as well. And next, I will be cutting the blue pattern paper, or CS3, into nine pieces that are four and a half inches wide by one and a quarter inches tall. I cut two strips from the cardstock that were four and a half inches wide, and then I cut those down to one and a quarter inches tall until I ended up with nine pieces. Off camera, I cut and folded my white cardstock into nine card bases. Once all of the cutting was done, it was time to start putting my cards together. Now to match up the pattern papers, I take piece A and then piece B from the next pattern and piece C from the third. You can also switch this up, piece A from the first, piece C from the second, and piece B from the third pattern. Do this however you want to, just make sure that each piece is a different pattern. Before I stamp my sentiments, I'm gonna go ahead and put together as much of the card as I can. I take one of my little sets of pattern paper, piece A gets adhered to the top center of the card, and then piece B gets adhered to the bottom center of the card. You will notice that there is a white gap in between those two pieces, but that's okay because later it will get covered up. So I just continue that with each of my pattern paper sets until I have all nine card fronts completed. Off camera, I did test stamp one of each of the ink colors and I put those up against one of the card fronts. And honestly, I probably could have went with either blue, but I did decide to go with the darker, the blue denim. Then I started doing my other stamping. You'll notice this first sentiment I got out. It was a little too wide to stamp portrait, so I just flipped that white piece around and stamped this one on a landscape orientation. I continued doing these with my sentiments until I had stamped all nine of the sentiment pieces. Once all of the sentiments were stamped, I matted each one of those onto the gray cardstock or the CS2 piece. The next step in my process was to mat each of the pattern paper strips with the blue cardstock or the CS3 piece. Now you'll notice that the pattern paper fills that cardstock strip left to right, but there is a small border on the top and bottom. The final thing that I'm gonna do for my cards today is get those pattern paper strips adhered across the center of the card. But first, I do need to place each of the sentiment blocks onto the card fronts. This is one of those places where you can adjust these pieces, whatever looks best with your sizing and your orientation. Because there is some overhang on the left and the right of the card front, I got out my nonstick scissors and just trimmed that excess off lickety split. These scissors are great for this. The adhesive does not gum them up. I then just continue this same process until I have completed all nine of my card fronts.
I wanted to show you a couple examples of how I switched up the layout just a little bit. Sometimes I put the sentiment on the left and then I also angled my strip in the opposite way of what the sketch showed. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my first set of cards using the March 2020 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. And now don't forget to visit all of the collaborators. Their blogs, YouTube channels, and Instagram accounts are linked in the description box below. I hope you'll check each one of them out, leave them some love, and until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.